Catherine! Catherine! What in the hell should I preach about in church this Sunday? Who this is is Tommy Householder. He's the pastor at Gardner Street Church here in Springdale. He's a good man, but lest you say he has flaws. Uh, many flaws. Thomas Louise Householder, watch your language here. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, verse 5. Who this is is Catherine Householder, Tommy's wife of 21 years. She's the rock of the Householder house, and certainly long-suffering but does her best to keep her husband in check. But sometimes she feels as though she needs a different kind of spirit. You'll see. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Catherine. I'm just stuck. I've spent the last couple of weeks hammering away at them and just going at them about salvation and trying to scare the hell out of their souls. So I thought this week maybe I'd wobble upside the head with some love and compassion for their fellow man or some crap like that. Well, baby. Loving the hell out of people is more effective than scaring the hell out of them. You preach on whatever you think the Lord is leading you to preach on. Catherine's right. When Tommy is offended or upset about anything that can be perceived as religiously immoral, he's not subtle about it from the pulpit. Dance and gyrate to the devil's music and you'll be his dance partner on the day of judgment. Drink a beer, go to hell. My friends, television and the movies, that's where the devil sneaks in and Judgment. I think I'm going to go with judgment. There are certainly some in our fold who could hear some words about judgment. Well, there's Judy, she's a gossip, and Pete, he's an awful racist. And what, Gladys thinks she's better than everybody because her stepson's a lawyer. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with judgment. Just remember what it says in Matthew chapter 7 Judge not, lest you be judged. While you're pointing a finger at someone else, there are four fingers pointing right back at you. Yeah, whatever. Well, look at the junk on TV. It's just crap. Junk, junk, crap, sin, junk, people with no clothes on. Junk, crap, bingo! We have a winner. God has spoken. What wholesome family-friendly entertainment did you find? Predators and their prison wives' paternity test results. God is good. No, baby, I got laundry to do. Maybe Sarah can sing a special on Sunday. I mean, if the Lord moves her. That I offered her $20. I wonder where she is today. She's probably out there witnessing to the lost or, I don't know, studying the word or praying. Or daydreaming about some boy again. Lord, be with Sarah as she studies today. May she get a lot done. May she not be distracted by boys. And if it is your will, lead a a wholesome Christian boy into her path that will only make her a better person. Amen. Good luck with that. Oh, Jesus. Lance, dude, that's disgusting. Like, seriously. And are you not wearing any kind of deodorant? Who this is is Virgil Upright of the Carlin County Uprights. Yep, those Uprights. The ones famous for their flea market, firework stands, and frequent appearances in General Sessions Court. <laughs> he is also a driver for Pete's Pizza, voted the number one pizza in Springdale. Got that right. On this Saturday, he is headed to the library. Not just use the good bathroom, but to actually study. Sorry. I ran out of deodorant this morning, and so I tried to use one of those deodorizing cakes like you hang in a toilet. Oh, that's smart. How'd that work for you? Not too great. The wire hanger keeps kind of uh, poking and scratching at my shoulder. Who this is is Lance Biggs. Lance has changed his major seven times. His latest is business, so he can learn how to, in his words, make money. He's unemployed and buys everything with coins. Herbal refreshment, beer, food, toilet cakes, you know, the essentials. 
His latest quest is to be the MC for shows at the Wounded Goose, the local college bar. You know, I have this new venture. I think that it's going to work really well for me. And what would that be? Yes. Uh... Nope, not even close. It's to be the MC at the Wounded Goose. That local college bar where you practically live, eat, and bathe out of a sink. One in the same. The MC Chad has to leave for a few weeks. I think it's for court or a medical procedure or something. He did have that spot on his hip that he's been needing to get looked at for a few years. He says it really itches and it kind of looks like Ohio if it was a square. Oh, so more like Idaho. I gotcha. But you know to MC a show, it takes what they'd call a uh, talent. Yeah, but I think I've got that covered. Watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce our next band, let me go over a few house rules here at the Wounded Goose. First, please remember to tip your wait staff, or as they like to write on their tax returns, alcoholic distribution personnel. You know, they've got to do laundry next week. One of them has to buy cigarettes, another has to get money for the church plate, so help them out. Also, remember that every night here is special at the Goose. Take a flyer home. You'll see that next Tuesday night is karaoke night, Wednesday night is trivia night, and then you will not want to miss Thursday night where we will have our very special guest, the amazing Steve. He's one of the top 50 sidekicks in the nation. Uh, you stink. And with that, I would like to introduce our next act, all the way from Jones Boogie, Arkansas, The Ugly Models. Wow. I'll catch up with you later, though. I gotta head to the library to do Mr. Timmons' assignment. You know he puts uh. every assignment right. <laughs> I hate him. Okay, class. Today's examination will be comprised of 30 multiple choice questions and 20 essay questions. You will have one hour to complete the exam and not one minute more. And any hint of cheating will result in a score of zero. Do your best and remember that no matter the outcome, I will still love you. Well, good luck with that. I'll catch you later. I gotta go get some herbal refreshment. You work tonight? Oh yeah. Feeding the lonely, the partiers, and those who can't cook for themselves. I'll see you later. Keep the dorm unlocked. Who this is is Sarah Householder. That's right, Tommy and Catherine's daughter, who Tommy wants to bribe with $20 and the Holy Spirit to sing tomorrow. She's a kind, boy-crazy young lady. She's also talented and boy-crazy. Yes, it was worth mentioning twice. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. And please help me with the assignment. Please guide Dr. Timmons to give us easier assignments in the future. And Lord, I just know you have the perfect guy for me. Don't let me get my hopes up. Amen. Okay, let's get started on this paper. Dr. Timmons is a mother. Well, hello. Me? Of course, silly. You mind if I join you? Oh, uh, well. My name's Sarah uh, with an H. My GPA is a 3.5. My mom does bookkeeping and my dad is the pastor at the Gardner Street Church. I also have a sister who's kind of like the black sheep of our family. I don't really talk to her. And my major is elementary education. Oh, okay. Well, my name's Virgil with an L and I can name all the states that are squares. Oh my gosh, cute and funny. Seriously? You know, what brings you to the library on such a beautiful Saturday like today? I'm working on Dr. Timmons' assignment. I thought you'd be at the football game. We have a football team? What are we called, like the fighting something or others? <laughs> Virgil, you really are something else. We're the Wildcats. How did you not know that? I mean, you've got to have your head in the sand. No, although my head was in the toilet last Tuesday. Oh dear, are you sick? Is it a virus? <coughs> boy! I told you that you couldn't down three pictures of beer while eating limitless nachos. Get it out, get it out, alright? Yeah, that's what it was. Nacho ordinary virus. <laughs> Every Tuesday night, apparently. 
Oh no, I'm getting a call from work. I gotta got go in. Funny, studious Anne has a job. Where do you work? Pete's Pizza, one greater location in the Springdale area. How did you know that was my favorite pizza place? I knew she was gonna say that. Well, here, have some coupons. Buy one large Supreme Pizza, get a smaller size free, or you can get another large half-priced. That's based on the number of toppings, too, four or less. If you want any more toppings, it's 50 cents extra. If you want a topping that we don't have, then, oh well, can't get it. Can I request you as the driver? Oh, um, Sarah with an H? I'd have to check with my manager about that because, you know, the availability and the, you know. Thank the Lord. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the one. Oh. Hi, Mom. Yeah, still here working on this paper. Yeah, Dad already asked me, and look, I don't feel led to sing the special in church tomorrow. Yeah, Dad told me he was going witnessing this afternoon to take the gospel where it needs to be heard. You know, I really admire his ability to win the lost and nurture the found. Wow, he sure does spread love. Don't mess with me, you little punk. We both know this is just a den of sin. You got beer and cigarettes and rubber, rubber condoms. Right. Oh, and don't forget this uh, wide variety of adult magazines behind here. Smut. Smut. Naked books. Smut. Right. Is that gonna be all a drink and a bag of chips? How about a lottery ticket? Payoff tonight is $45 million. What kind of a fool do I look like? That is ill-gotten devil's money. I don't know, you could do a lot of good with it. This is all new territory for Pastor Tommy Householder. All right, peel me one He wasn't fully convinced he was doing the right thing, but he did like the idea of helping the church. How's this work? Helping out charities and getting a new truck. It's easy, you pick six numbers and watch the television during your local news and see if the numbers match. You can sit at that table. I just cleaned all the smut off of it. All right, six numbers. There's got to be some way to do this. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Please be with Catherine as she continues her day. Please be with my sermon tomorrow on judgment. Let it be your words, not mine. And help me pick these six numbers so I can celebrate your kingdom. All right, now, let's see, we'll go with 33 for the age Jesus was when he died. Two for the number of animals on the ark. 12 for the number of disciples. 40 for the days in the desert. 67 for the number of books in the Bible. There are 66 books in the Bible. And nine for the number of toes on Catherine's feet. Thank you very much, Lord. Amen. Never seen a Bible in a store before. You've been reading and praying to your magic God in the sky? How dare you bring that thing in here? Save it for your church, not in here. Yo, man, I'll have you know something. In this world of lawlessness and jacked upness, where well-meaning things get canceled and silenced just because some thin-skinned, oversensitized bounty hunter gets offended, well, now sometimes, sometimes I agree with it, but sometimes it goes too far. Just this week, my favorite show when I was a youth, growing up, Skippy the Squirrel, was canceled, was taken off of television because he hit a hunter in the head with a sack of acorns. Now, granted, there may have been a nut joke in there, but my point is, Everybody has the same rights. You have rights, Christians have rights. We all have the same rights. Now, if you will excuse me, I am gonna piss off the devil. While Lance was trying to kiss up to Chad about being the MC at the Wounded Goose, Virgil was out delivering pizzas and his next stop was the glass slipper, the delivery every male driver wanted to make. But Springfield's Gentlemen's Club had been the target of Tommy's ire for years. He referred to it as either the devil's playground, the den of sin, or the house of ill repute. Don't forget Hell's Flesh Palace, you bastard! Right, and Hell's Flesh Palace. Tonight was going to be interesting. Hey, big dog. Welcome to the glass slipper. Oh, I see you have a delivery. My name's Dot. Oh, hey, Dot. Yeah, I have a delivery for Anastasia. It's a pizza from Pete's Pizza. See? 
But don't you guys have like a kitchen in here? <laughs> well, by definition we do. But the cook can't cook, and so he uses the stove for a cigarette lighter and a heater. <laughs> I'll go get her. So, so you like the bouncer security dude or something? Yeah. My oh. name's Tiny. I keep things in order around here. <laughs> if you would've came by earlier, you would've seen me throw some loser out on his face. He tried to tip one of the girls with coins, and when he wouldn't leave, I had to show his face to that door. I bet you did, but why do they call you Tiny? Cause you're a, you're a pretty big dude. Well, my name's Tony, and you know I only work here part time. It pays the bills, and it gets me through culinary school. Yeah, see, Tiny, it's a play on Tony. It's what they call an oxymoron. It's like if they call uh, a tall person shorty, or if they called you handsome. Oh, huh, I see what you did there. Like if I call my friend Lance like smart or. Something like that. Here she is. Whoa. Whoa is right. Who this is is Anna, or Anastasia as she is known at the Glass Slipper. As you can see, she's easy on the eyes and has a heart of gold. She's made some poor choices in the past, but believes in second chances. She can quote the Bible better than most pastors and can shoot a mean game of eight ball. Uh, I'm Pizza Virgil. Vir I'm, I'm Virgil from Pizza Pizza. Here's your pizza. It's 11:50. Terrific. Here's twenty dollars. Get the change. Say, are you guys busy tonight? Kinda. I was at the library earlier delivering a pizza to some girl. She was ooing and aahing over me like I was the last dude on earth or something. Ew. <laughs> Sounds like my sister. Well, have a good night. <laughs> What a charmer. Say, I didn't know you had a sister, Anna. Yeah, she doesn't claim me anymore. She disowned me after an unexpected event happened in our lives. In her eyes, I am evil and full of sin. Whoa, whoa. Do they know you work here? They don't know I'm in town as far as I know, but I'm pretty sure they have a pretty low opinion of me. Oh, if they knew you like we know you and, and what a good person you are, they'd think otherwise. Or oh, you're so good with service projects and, and volunteering. Oh, and don't forget the bikini car wash for the juvenile diabetes. Well, you're a better Christian than most people I know. I don't do it for me. And I don't do it to toot my own horn. I'm going in, but thanks for the compliments. Teddy Bear Ted Timmons, my man. Come on in. Right here, right here, boss. Come on in. Hey, uh, real quick, one of the girls has vertigo and another is plantar fasciitis, so just be careful in there, man. Matthew 7, 1. Judge not, lest you be judged. The judgment that you use on others is the judgment that will be used on you. The measure you use on others is the measure that will be used on you. I'm talking to you, Clifford Jackson. I'm talking to you, Sylvia Tyree. I'm talking you, to you. You, Thomas Householder. What is this? And why do you have it? Well, that is not what it appears to be, my love. Well, it appears to be a lottery ticket. Well, then it's exactly what it looks like, but I can explain. That is an investment in the Lord's work. This is going to be good. We start reading in Matthew chapter 7 about how we should act to get to heaven, but doing right ain't always easy to do. But I respect teachers that like to say ain't And auto detailers just can't faint Because who am I to judge and look at you? Obese gym teachers And evil thinking preachers Dentists with the cavity on a tube Dancers who fall down in unfunny clowns we're all hypocrites searching for the truth. 
Now the Bible is full of imperfect people And there's a whole lot more sitting under this steeple Getting ready for the return of the Lord Now I won't get to heaven by just good behavior It takes more than that to meet my Savior And that's the price that anyone can afford Doctors with the nape Chefs who cannot bake Smokers who never seem to have a light Marriage counselors who divorce And cowboys kicked by their horse We're all hypocrites who need to get it right Now we can live a life to anger the devil Or stick our heads in the sand without using a shovel But sometimes we get in our own way Now there's no perfect one except for Jesus And God knew that when I was a fetus So I ask you to bear with me along the way Musicians who can't play And potters who hate clay are just another part of the crowd Skin doctors who have zits And strippers with saggy faces We have to be more careful than proud Pray for us often and loud We're all hypocrites who need to get it right we're all hypocrites who strive for the light.